do it. In the bottom left here, the Terran in the blue from Korea. He is Buddy. He's looking focused as ever. Some doubts about what his form would be like coming into this tournament, but so far looking fantastic. But likewise, looking unstoppable up to now. In the top right hand side of World of Sleepers, the Red Zerg player representing the Africa Freaks he is Sue. Yeah, it's going through the bracket flawlessly here, which is a really good performance because Sue's been a little bit shaky online, which is, I mean, to be fair, everyone's only really played online because so there hasn't really been an offline tournament just yet. But with these uh, tournament runs, you know, in, in some of the some of the big tournaments like the Kung Fu Cup, you know, Alima Leagues, that sort of thing. Yes, he's getting deep, and he did actually win one of the Alima Leagues, but he's also kind of just sort of disappearing at early stages of some of those brackets as well. Yeah. Not something you'd expect from Sue. Bunny, he's definitely one of those Terrans that is always seeming to be overshadowed by those other big Korean Terrans. Your Marus, your TYs, your Innovations. He just never seemed to even, uh, you know, be too much of a blip on the radar for you know, fans out there, the community in general, they know Bunny is good. He's a bit more of an aggressive Terran, you know, a bit more bio-focused, but he's just not been able to get very deep in really big tournaments. I'm not, uh, you know, Sue has definitely done that more than once, almost too many times, if you ask him. Absolutely. Uh, an interesting opening here. It's a 13 yeah. gas, 12 pull from Sue. He has pulled off gas, so he's not going to be baneling busting with this. It's not completely all in, but it is super heavily committed. Now, are these Zerglings going to dodge that SCV? They do. They see the SCV coming with the Overlord. Gets on its walkie-talkie, says, hey, guys, take an <laughs> alternate path. They are going to just barely dodge uh, around that SCV. Oh, God, that was just yeah, there, yeah. Open. I mean, again, like, not all in, as Pig mentioned, but definitely very committed. And with the opening of Bunny, Sue's opening looks really good. Bunny did get a CC on that low ground, and that Reaper needs to stay back. The one Reaper alone will have a bit of a tough time. These Lings are only a handful of seconds away from having speed. And if there's no bunker for that Reaper, it needs to basically evacuate that natural, so... Yeah. It looks unlikely that he's going to save this command center, to be honest. Uh, in this scenario, I mean, even with the bunker, they can wait for more Zerglings. But right now, Sue did build an extra couple of drones. So it's not that many Zerglings out on the map. And he really does want to get a cancel on this command center. Oh, the Zerglings don't go and, and get on top of that SCV. The Reaper will be able to get inside that grenade, uh, inside that bunker. I really think two of those Zerglings should have split off and focused down that SCV. Now with the bunker up, it's going to cause an extra problem. Yeah, I'm definitely with you there. I feel like it. it could have done a little bit more damage. This, As the dust settles, isn't that bad for Bunny. Obviously, he's losing a couple SCVs. His natural is being delayed. These Lings, relatively inexpensive for Sue, but he's not losing that Reaper, and the Reaper will kill these Lings eventually, and also the reactor about to finish up. I mean, he is delaying the natural, so that's very nice for Sue, who is just droning back at home. I, I think you'd like a little bit more damage, but because he went back to droning so quickly, it will be acceptable for Sue. Curious to see a player just go only eight Zerglings initially and then rallying another four or six over. You, you usually see at least 12 or 14 Zerglings before the drones come down. And in that case, you're looking for six, seven, eight SCV kills at least. You're looking for potentially the cancel on the command center and uh, forcing the Terran to rebuild that on the high ground. As it is going to come out with a little bit of an ambush for that cliff providing all the safety that Reaper needs. Indeed. As the 111 build rounds out here for Bunny, we'll see what he comes out of that starport. Lots of options here for the Terran. Sue is still just in drone mode right now. He's taking his third base, he's about a third of the way done, and is squeezing out more and more drones. These Lings sort of owning the map at the moment for him. Uh, it seems that Bunny is moving across here. It looks like with the Reaper to try and hop into the main, make sure Sue isn't hiding any extra gas or a lair or, or any tech on him. He sees that there's still hatchery tech here for the Zerg. Yeah, gonna come through, obviously, making sure he isn't being all in with Banelings or Roaches. And as he completes the scout of the natural, he's gonna feel very comfortable. Sees that's filled with drones, no tech structures. And upon seeing that, Bunny drops the third command center. So nice economic follow-up. Starts a Viking to clear out the Overlord scouts. And you can see that Bunny's paused Hellion production. Realizing Hellions aren't really gonna be the way to do big damage right at this moment. He's just got three to stop a Ling Flood. Fusion Core goes down behind it. It's looking like we're gonna see a Battle Cruiser opening. And you know, I look at World of Sleep as TVZ Maynard. I don't think there's a better build for Terran than BC Battle Mech. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those maps that's so hard to play Bio on against Zerg because they really just start to take over the map much, much quicker than the Terran does. So Mech, you do get that big one, sort of like a Phalanx attack, where you have a lot of power, a lot of splash damage, and you can just cut through the Zerg forces and creep doesn't really matter as much. I this is a bit of a different BC opener, though. Like, he's putting a lot of uh, starport time and also gas 
frankly, for uh, Viking and Liberator first, mm. and then delaying that BC a little bit. So it's not the quickest BC build here from Bunny. Yeah. But the BC is always quite threatening. I think that's just a diet kind of, hey, you've been thrown off the normal path by this Zergling aggression at the start. Yeah, true. And it's also kind of good because as Ooh. soon... Ooh, losing the Vikings rough. That sucks. But you're going to see Viking. You're going to see a Liberator in the near future. The last thing you're expecting after that is a battle cruiser. So if I was Sue, I would not be building tons of queens. I would not be rushing a spire to rush corruptors out. So the battle cruisers could be a big surprise in this game, even though they are hitting the field very late. Certainly, and the extra gas has been taken there in the natural four. Bunny almost certainly going to be a mech follow up here. Doesn't start Yamato or anything like that. It's one of the bigger tells. The Liberator just parked right on the main base there. YOLO Liberator from Bunny, and honestly, not really being punished. The Liberator lives, it gets a few kills, a little bit of lava damage there. Spire does go down for Sue. So that's a pretty quick Spire from Sue. Maybe he feels like BC's are next. Mm, I mean, it's so common to play against BC mech here. And uh, Roach is, of course, being an amazing start. Roach speed going to give you a lot of aggressive potential, as well as the ability to shut down Heli and backstabs. In the rare cases that you do face someone who's still using the Cyclone mech, something we don't see as much at those top levels these days, that gives you the maneuverability to deal with it. So you can squeeze out a surprising round of muters, you can do a lot of things, but hold on, that's a big BC teleport in. Right on top of five queens, not usually a fight that the BC can win, especially considering that transfusion energy. But those Hellions doing a little bit of drone damage there, they get rid of the lings, but the drones keeping very safe here, keeping behind their mamas. Protecting their babies here as those drones go back to mining and back to work. This t this teleport timing from Bunny with the Hellions looked like it could have been very, very scary, but Sue's handling it well. The BC there skirting the edges, looking to clear up creep. It's going to put a scan on that. However, the Queens can immediately respread the creep if they so wish. Being very conservative with those Queens for now is Sue. He's got plenty of supply free. The Spire is ready, and we're going to see about eight Corruptors, I believe, uh, power up almost immediately. Just going to shut down the follow-up BC harass once they're on the field. Uh, no Yamato here, so you can't really just one-shot the Queen and leave. He's actually engaging a Spore Crawler here. Bunny taking a lot of damage on that BC. He does need to get out. He's up Corruptors. Eight Corruptors are about to, uh, you know, if they pop, they will obviously kill this BC very, very quickly. But it's about to have Tactical, tactical Jump off cooldown again to come back. Liberator showing itself now. Just edging Ooh. itself outside of range of this Spore Crawler. Really nice lib here from Bunny. Nice that it went home, it repaired back to full hit points. And uh, even though it hasn't got a lot of kills, each time it forces mining time, keeps Sue pinned back a little bit. And he's so good at just extricating it from trouble, not losing it. Behind this, the double armory is about to finish up. We're going to see those double upgrades. Fourth command center being built on location. Mm. Bunny getting ready for a very long drawn out game here. Certainly. So a bit of a block for Bunny as well as the uh, fourth isn't complete and he had, to, he had to make three depots at once. But it is being worked on and back to production. He's going straight for the Cyclones here because he does have Corruptors as a problem. So while he does have a good number of tanks, that means he's safe against Roaches, you know, relatively safe against Roaches. We are going to be seeing a reaction from Sue. He's almost certainly going to be heading towards Swarm Hosts here. Sue doesn't really like Hive Tech. He doesn't really like Spellcasters, but he's very much a fan of Swarm Host Nidus Worming down a mech player. Swarm host night is one of the most effective ways to go about it. The infestation pit now on the way. The Baneling Nest, the second evolution chamber. That combo of Banelings, uh, very powerful with these high supply roach swarm host armies. Effective at crushing through not only planetary fortresses, but also clearing out large numbers of the low tier mech units. If there's a lot of Widow Mines, Hellbats, or Cyclones clumped up, Banelings become a fantastic way to deal with that. We are amazingly seeing a Hive here from Sue. Maybe he does want to go for Viper for a change. Uh, we have seen, you know, Sue try and make Infestors and, and that sort of thing work against the Battle Mech army part. But as far as his Spellcaster usage goes, not as scary as some of the other Zergs out there. So, Bunny. He's going to continue on with using these BCs for map presence. It's really the only thing he has on the map because he's lost that Hellion run by. He did get a few drones there, but at the moment, Sue's economy, very, very lovely. A is at 90 drones, actually. So a beastly economy for the Zerg. And Terrence is trying to secure a fourth and really lock things down. This is just not very attackable at all for Sue. So surprising he didn't go for the Swarm Host at all. Yeah, the BC tax there, taking out two Corruptors, teleporting home for a repair. BCs uh, almost always cost efficient, but they take a long time to rack up that value over the course of a game. So, you know, they take up a lot of supply. They're very expensive. Bunny still, in essence, is turtling right now. Yes, he's poking around with some Hellions, some Cyclones, BCs poking in when they can, but hasn't really been able to move out with any frontal push. And there's no sign of that happening for a long while in this game. 
And gets half a dozen drones there, just up to seven in, in total from that run by. Not too bad for a few Hellions for Bunny. Things like that, just trying to slow down the Zerg a bit as Bunny's work account also is pretty astronomical here. Almost two UI levels, 88 workers here for Bunny. I mean, it's not quite 110 SCVs, but he's on his way. Of course, both players are cutting work. It's all about making tech units, all about making units in general at this point, and then actually battling for the victory. We have that, the battle mech part of Bunny's army. Not all the army, just a chunk of it. Clearing up creep. And what Sue wants here is a fungal, Baneling connections, that sort of thing, and not to lose too much creep in general. It does help him, especially with the quicker, lighter force of money. Two, two upgrades now starting up and so many command centers on the way. Bunny is looking to eke out a long-term efficiency game. Sue here, he's getting frustrated. He wants to land that bungle, Bye. connects with a few units. Yeah, just gives up some bubbles here. I mean, Sue is heading towards what looks to be Broodlords, which I'm a little bit worried about, honestly, even though he's doing a great job at keeping the Terran back. Whoa. Thors are a lot better than they used to be. Where? Sue's still attacking into this army. Where is Bunny's defensive force? Where are the siege tanks? Yeah, that too. Uh, I think he has enough Cyclones. Okay, it's all right. There's one more Fungal, but I don't think there's enough Zerg to capitalize. You know, when you chase down a Hellion Cyclone army the whole way across the map like that, it gives it a lot of room to punch at you from distance, and that's what this army excels at. Its ability to wear you down over time. You can see the scan there providing vision. The Cyclones lock on, and then they disengage and pull back. These are very expensive trades for Sue. But Bunny, I would not mind him going back and repairing these units. Yeah, they're very, very deep in the red here. One fungal would shut down a lot of this army. So he does pull it back to the other side of the brush there to the siege tank support. She gets two command centers at a time here, one to the north and one to the south. And I mean, if he gets wind of this Great Aspire, if there's a scan on that Great Aspire, he's got so many tech lab factories, he can make a lot of Thors, and that really kind of negates Broodlords in total because the Broodlord and Festa just ain't what it used to be big. Yeah, you know, Broodlords hard countered by Thors, some would say at the moment. But remember, if those Thors are ever exposed and they just get jumped on at the start of the fight, they still fall very quickly. And as always, Zerg production is so volatile. It can so suddenly change paths. And right now, Bunny has no way of finding out about that Broodlord morph. So if there's no Thors even on the field, those Broodlords can have a big window to march across the map, take out a few expansions before that counter is ready. These three Hellions showing up. I mean, they're 12 seconds away from having 2-2, two, two, which would have been nice, but he is still going to get some drones here. Bunny also setting up his siege tanks to try and protect that north base as he gets into the planetary. And he left one Hellbat down here with the exorbitant task of getting rid of a hatchery all by his lonesome. Doesn't work out for him. Surprise, surprise. Bunny's got a big economy, but he's not ready for this brute no, he doesn't have any Thors at all. He's supposed to be making battle mech. Yeah, he's got a few tanks, tons of Cyclones. Vikings start up immediately, but that's a big problem. Those Broodlords completely uncontested. Tanks caught in the open. BC's going to go in for a backstab, but I think Bunny's going to have to give up at least a few bases. He needs to buy time. Two Thors are queued up, two Vikings. He's going to need more than that, but he's maxed out right now. He's got no free supply. Hey, after that, might have to throw away a few of these battle mech units. In fact, he's doing exactly that, sending out the Hellions and the Cyclones to try and pick off a hatchery here, which I think he will get. Continuing to take more damage down home. The Hellbat's actually mitigating some of these Broodlings. He is going to give up a base, as you mentioned, Pig. One goes down up to the north, the one to the south, still alive. He could actually send the SCVs down there instead. Three free upgrades on the way. Five Thors at a time here for Bunny. He just needs to hold on. Those Hellbats doing wow. fantastic damage. The Cyclones did take out that hatchery in the north. Bunny has a ton of bases. He lost, I think, two command centers there. One in front of that northern base, as well as the one on the top. So he's lost a little bit of economy. But when you're on 80 SCVs, you've got the southern base with a planetary going up. Your upgrades have not been touched. I think Bunny is playing a fantastic mech game. And now as the Thors join the field, he's ready for it. Sue! is adding more Broodlords. He's continuing I'm, I'm, to commit. I'm actually slack-jawed, Fig. Uh, I, I cannot believe we're seeing more more Broods here from Sue. I mean, he hasn't seen Thor's been thrown in for Bunny, but he has to know that Bunny's been preparing for the next wave of Broods here, or for even the initial wave that hasn't been killed just yet. He's gonna try and pick up one of these Thor's. The Hellbat's coming in to try and protect it, though, keeping those Broodlings alive for as short as a long time as possible. Yeah, there's not many Corruptors there, and the Vikings are going forwards trying to shut down these Broodlords. As the Queens come forward, Bunny has got to disengage. He does not have his Thors really impactful in this engagement just yet. BC's coming in, he's gonna go for it. That's wow. a lot of Broodlords. The Thors now starting to land hits on those Broodlords. The Corruptors are gone, the Vikings doing big damage to the Queens. Start to finally push back those Vikings, the Transfusers land. A great fight there for Sue. Bunny pushed back, and now guess what? The Ravagers are still there on the ground. They're a big threat for those Thors. Corrosive Bile, very good at taking out the anti-air of Terran. Yeah, 
And without that Hellbat wall or even just a bunch of units DPSing down those Broodlings, the Thors can go down pretty quick. It looks like Sue, even though his composition was questionable, might just have a little bit too much. He's breaking this backbone of Bunny here. The Vikings dancing around the Broodlords, but just taking too long to kill this many Broods. You know, those Broodlords still demand respect, even in this current form of balance, and Sue is showing why. You know, you're expecting him to swap into something else. You're not expecting another six or seven Broodlords to show up. And Bunny is going to pay the ultimate price by the looks of it. This fight turning things around a little bit more. I think this one is an overextension yeah, it's an for overextension Sue. for sure. He's losing a lot here. Obviously, Sue's in a really, really good spot, but he doesn't really want to throw away too many more units because that is how you lose a one game. We want to see, I think, more Hellion backstabs, maybe a few Cyclone counters as well after this. I think here in this low economy scenario, it's very important for Bunny to keep the pressure on Sue's economy. His bank has been worn out. He's realizing his work account's not that big. Even Sue here is starting to add a few more workers. And the more you can slow that down, the better. And he's going to do exactly as you wanted here, Pig. Hellion's running through and getting a handful of drones. Not too many drones at this base anyway. There is a transfer on the way. Ling's trying to get around those Hellions. They get a nice around there. One Hellbat with a bunch of drones all stacked up. Nearly got the dream scenario. He is still going to kill a little bit there, but you know what? That could have been way worse for Sue. All those drones so low in red. Oh, the Corruptors picking off that planetary to the south. That was one of the very few lifelines for Bunny here. Ooh, the Thors do punish a little bit. But, uh, losing that expansion is so rough. You know, it's not just the fact that he lost the bases, it's those extra orbitals. Bunny was able to get up to about eight, nine command centers in this game so quickly, and they all got sniped in those pushes. It was really, really unfortunate. You can see he's already lost four different command centers. And now look at this, Sue, he's got creep over most of the map. He's got a big economy. His upgrades are good. He's adding just a couple more investors to keep those in the mix. And it's tank Hellion production up against a rather scary Zerg army. Yeah, he's floating out the main and the natural here so he can continue to mine. The economic situation for the Terran, not so great, but it still exists. So he can continue to make units. He's making a lot of tanks right now, actually, after getting a big round of Hellions. So he's just trying to massage his composition to keep up with the, you know, the composition of Sui's. Like, because as you've mentioned earlier in the cast, Zerg can really flip its composition on its head after losing a bunch of units and getting that supply cap to work with, as long as he has a bank. Bank-wise, Sue is starting to build up a little bit as he has been maxed for a minute or so. That's a few more Hellions and you want to throw away right now, Bunny. Yeah, I don't it's know about this. Big commitment and uh, Sue well positioned, anticipated this. Only loses two drones. Those Hellions, thankfully, do survive for now. Might be able to go back in there and do some damage later. Liberator's been thrown into the mix for Bunny. Feels like he's opening up to potentially Broodlords coming back again. If Sue realizes that the Hellions get thinned out and that there's a lot of tanks, Broodlords make sense again if you don't have too many Vikings to worry about or uh, too many Thors to worry about. And there it is, actually, another Broodlord being made from Sue right now. Just the one, though! Maybe just to hold the, to be the flag bearer for the Zerg army as he comes in for the next attack. Yeah, that's Rando Calrissian, the Broodlord, right there. He's, uh, it's almost like the accidental swarm most that gets built in the game. It's like, does this do anything? I haven't seen an accidental Broodlord before. That seems like it's hard to make a mistake there. But we do have this big attack from Sue, the Banelings, the Roaches, the Ravages, rolling on in, and it looks like they're going to do a lot here all by themselves without that Broodlord. And even to the south side, it looks like Sue also attacking into that command center. He's making broods right in front of the base, a little bit too close to that turret. Gets his money back guaranteed, but he is going to try and get more broods up by the looks of things that seems to be his plan in the meantime opening up this base to bunny for some counter damage and bunny is desperate to do any damage here to sue who is in a very nice spot and bunny's a fan of the uh, the rocky movies apparently the man knows how to take a punch he just keeps expanding down the other side of the map every time sue comes in and eliminates a base we see another base or two spring up on the other side of the map bunny of course going very deep with this push now broodlord's being morphed i really i'm not 100 percent sure i feel like you look at this army uh, even Massling could take it out. There's, there's not a lot of Hellbats. It's very unsupported. I do think Burrow, Neural, and Festers would be great, but he forgot the Burrow! He got a whole little oh, thing of Infestors man, he and did Neural too. just starts the Burrow now. That is awkward, getting Neural before Burrow. And a lot of links being made from Sooth, so it is a great addition, as Pigs mentioned here. This push from the Terran to the north and south is doing crazy damage. Sue was on 80 odd drones, down to 66 at the moment. They're running out of anywhere to mine as well? He's going to yeah. lose both of those bases. This is getting weird, man. It looked all Sue at the moment. The Thors are leaving these tanks exposed. The Broodlords are in the middle of the map here. Sue trying to get on top of that command center as it gets closer and closer to the landing. Doesn't look like Bunny's going to be able to land that one for a while. There's fighting going on all over the map. These Thors and tanks going to try and extricate themselves. Uh, those Thors up there have found a party of drones. The Broodlords will slowly deal with that. These Thors and tanks going to re-secure this top left-hand side. Bunny desperately needs to get those bases back up and mining. So, I mean, as it stabilizes here, 
Su trying to get value out of these units. He's really just putting up as Ooh. much of a fight as he can on this side of the map. And this is such a good job of delaying Bunny, establishing those bases. Su, most importantly, has the central low ground base, but he's a bit slow to put his workers back to mining. Right now, the income is next to nothing for both players. That's yeah, very, very low for 20 minutes into the game. There's just been so much damage. A very, very action-packed game here. A lot of energy on those Hephaestus, and they do have Burrow now. So Neural is definitely a threat to Bunny. If he can grab a couple of those tanks or some of the Thors or something like that. The Hephaestus to the south. Going to try to come the hit squad. Spellcasters here for Sue. He is under pressure from that Terran force. The Broodlords not high enough in count actually to engage the Sunny anymore. No Corruptors to assist. So the Vikings can just chase them down. Oh, those Broodlords. Not a great choice. The Corruptors coming out might save them, though. We see some rapid. Ravager Biles on the Liberator. The Roaches and Ravagers just want to get rid of those Thors. And the oh. quadruple Neural on the left-hand side. The Judas tanks here doing so much damage to Bunny's army from the back line. Bunny potentially didn't realize it or didn't care. But unfortunately, they just deleted that front line for the Terran. And now the Corruptors are here. The Vikings getting pushed back. Bunny getting pushed back. He really doesn't have any chance of getting a big up army up again. Oh, and it's an orbital. It's an orbital. Is the top left an orbital or a planetary? I'm not sure, but if that goes to nothing. Oh, no. <laughs> if those lings find that base, and I'm sure they will, he's in big trouble. Landed Vikings and Hellions. Not the late <laughs> game army you want as a Terran player. That is, uh, you know, a, a sure sign of desperation for Bunny. If Bunny was up against a diamond player, maybe he could style on him with a mass landed ground army of Vikings. But it is unfortunately Sue, a previous world champion of IEM. And he won't let him get away with an army like that. Sue's going to make a lot more Roaches, a lot more Ravages here. Honestly, whatever he wants to make is going to be very hard for Bunny to do anything about. It just do doesn't look like there's any edge here for the Terran. It would be a miracle to come back from this point. Yeah, Hellion Runby is going to try to get in. May find a That's stack City, of drones, though. but yeah, well protected. Spinecrawler protecting a future potential expansion as well. A new engineering bay does go down and uh, Cyclone production back to the most general unit that he can think of. The Cyclone shoots up, it shoots down. But when you've got that many uh, Infestors, so many Ravagers and Banelings, and you're looking at double the army supply, it's going to be very hard to deal with. Sue's going to take all these tanks for himself again. Another four tanks for Sue, doesn't mind if he does. And he's going to turn them and fight against the Terran army and then pick them off before they get their brains back. Sue is over here and deleting what remains of Bunny from the map. Beautiful play here by Sue. Bunny making him work for it, but the Brood Lord tech switch, and then following it up with yet another wave of Brood Lords, was the key thing here that gave Sue the momentum he needed. Bunny, I think, was was considering pretty much every other option. No doubt was thinking about Nidus Worms, was thinking about Ultras, Banelings crashing in from multiple angles, but Bunny was just not prepared for those Brood Lords earlier in this game, and now fighting from an economic deficit. Ah, uh, this army, you just cannot handle that much Zerg. Uh, economic deficit, army deficit, everything deficit. Sue on his front door with a lot of Infestors. I mean, he's making a battle neck army and Infestors specifically to actually kill that. GG, freak of freak. Sue getting game number one against Bunny. And that was a very entertaining game there on World of Sleepers. You know, we expect mech when you're playing Terran against Zerg on that map. You don't see battle mech too often anymore, but it is still useful time to time. In fact, Special used it against Namshar on one of his two map wins. And, uh... Bunny had a lot of hope there. I was getting worried for Sue when he was putting a lot into the Broodlords. Yeah. But he does still show us that unit, as you mentioned, commands respect. If you're not ready for it, it will DPS the hell out of your ground army. Oh, it's, that, it's the way it can appear out of the shadows, right? It's just suddenly, oh, here we are. Takes out a bunch of tanks, gets a few bases, and then he repeated it again. And something we've seen in quite a lot of games, I've seen Rogue do the same thing, is the Thors amazing against the Broodlords if it's just the Thors fighting the Broods, but we so often see these Ravagers just jump in with them, spread Biles all over those Thors, the Roaches and Ravagers can take them out, so if the Terran's just not quite set up as he's needed, if he doesn't have things like tanks covering those Thors, they can go down before they get the work done, and Broodlords, the moment there's no Thors, just absolutely dominant anti-ground unit. Yeah, you're not wrong. Well, see if Bunny can... Uh Tighten up his builds here for game number two. Sue on match point already, and one more map wins means that he is going to be the first qualified bra player from bracket three. It actually feels like this bracket's gone past pretty quick, man. Sue has cleaved his way through it really, really hard. Bunny as well has been dominating through his matches. I mean, there's been a few close matches, and I think that lower bracket is a real grueling, uh, grueling match. But, you know, here, these two guys, they just want to go straight to the group stage. They don't want to screw around. I mean, if you can have an easy run and get your day done with nice and early, 
And you can just take it easy, put your feet up, have a couple days off, and then worry about the round of 24 when you got to worry about the round of 24. And second gap, second map is going to be Simulacrum, Simulacrum, Tomato, Tomato, however you want to pronounce it. Let's get into it. In the top left here, the blue Terran ter player currently down the series. Thank you, Mapu. It is Bunny. And down here in the bottom right hand side, representing the Africa Freaks, he is last year's champion, Sue. Starting this tournament off with a bang. I don't believe he's dropped a map yet. Yeah, Sue, Sue has that thing where he just crushes people. Like when he's on, he makes matches not that close, right? Even that last one where he was pressed, suddenly the Broodlords came out and turned. I, I really was like, man, how is he going to solve this? Like Bunny looks so good with these engagements. He's covering the map in expansions and Sue had the answer. I, uh, I feel like that's Sue's magical quality. Until he gets stopped, he uh, he just looks like a, an absolute monster. Hey, you're not wrong. It's just so amazing when a player can look so on and then so off sometimes. And this is the this is the right time to pull your socks up and actually play your best StarCraft. That's for damn sure. I mean, he's a player who has his very specific strengths, right? It's that ability to master big mid-game engagements. His ability to power through the early game so hard that he often does get a lead for himself. Uh, I feel like every player that plays against Sue, they feel pressure to try and slow him down in some way because his macro is just so on point. Like his ability just mechanically to hit everything the way it needs to be done. It's a, a scary prospect if you don't harass him down and damage and slow him down a little bit in the early game. Speaking of the early game, this one's going a lot less stressful for Bunny as Sue just went hatch gas pull. So not that, uh, you know, early was it like eight lings or so? early speedling attack, the 13-12, to try and slow down the Terran's expansion. So this is a lot more standard of an opening, so whatever Bunny had in plan, at least for the early game, is not going to be upset. wonder if we'll see Bio on this map as well. I mean, definitely not a bad map for Mech, because <laughs> you get a little bit spread out covering your bases, it can get a little bit hard, but uh, I don't know, it's also smaller. You know, the, the Bio struggles with large maps, and even though this has got wide open spaces, it's got a few great tank positions, you can get across the map very quickly. And uh, I'm just always a fan of Bio TVZ. So anytime we get to see that, I'm very happy. Nice. You can actually kill this drone and block those oh! guys. Oh, the jukes. Oh, that's unfortunate for Bunny. That felt like a, uh, a drone kill and a third delay for sure. But just mispositioning that uh, Reaper for a second and great jukes there from Sue. It's curious that he didn't send the Lings across the map. You know, we've seen in the EU meta, if that Reaper goes to the third, the four Zerglings always go straight across to the map try to slow down the opponent's natural, snipe down the Marine, and cause a bit of havoc over there. But Sue here, just doing the older, more conservative style, making sure that Reaper can't come in and do any damage in the natural. Yeah, it looks like those Lings were working on the uh, the neutral rocks there, in front of that ramp, unbuildable plates. It's kind of the equivalent of uh, when you get ordered to you know dig a hole and then fill it back in. It's not the <laughs> highest priority. <laughs> like, well, in case I accidentally attack move this in a fight later in the game and wastes half a second of DPS, you know, it's... I've never done that. I mean, there's a lot of... I, I have lost a lot of stupid games in StarCraft 2 for sure. I'm not a yeah. great player, but, <laughs> um, but... But losing a game because I accidentally attacked the place hasn't happened yet. But hey, every edge. There's the Roach Warren coming down here from Sue. Three and a half minutes. Roach Warren, yeah, that's a, that's a quick one. Uh, I really, I don't know, it's just something about the wide open natural, no ramp on the natural. I love Ravager Ling on this map. I think there's some amazing attacks you can do with it. And with no more queens in production, feels like it's definitely got a good chance of being aggressive. 34 drones and uh, just the two gases. It's going to have enough gas to build about eight or nine roaches, but might, might only go for six or seven and, and try to opt for more Ravagers, you know, save the extra gas there. So we'll have to keep our eyes on that. More Overlords on the way. At this point, it's four minutes ten. No drones on that third. Are yeah, we? That is, oh. that is a that is a tell for uh, Bunny. He starts a fusion core. He, he doesn't know yet. No. Sure. So so well, he's got to really sniff it out. Four ten. The drones could still be transferring over there, and it could still only be a few. But at this point, he's got to he's got to get some inkling that this is happening, and he's got to get it soon. This is a map where this is such a common opening. And look at this. The queens here, happy to distract the Hellions. They go north. Are they going to see the roaches? Yes, they, they will. Yeah, so this course. means that Bunny is uh, going to have to leave that Liberator at home. Try and help out and slow things down as he gets potentially a Banshee out here. You do not have enough time to get out of Battlecruiser when there is Zerg aggression coming at you. 
and he's going to need those Hellions alive because it's not always the Roaches that kill you. Sometimes it's the Ling Flood behind them, so those Hellions need to also survive. Uh, I think that Lib needs to be defensive. Yes. Okay, yes, good, good choice. Uh, the Bunkers are just not there right now. I mean, he isn't even building, and he's even building a Depot in his natural. He's trying to hold on to this bit of high ground here, but remember that Liberator very exposed to Ravager Biles. Quick Ooh. on Siege, though. Nice micro from Bunny. Really, really nice. Still that wall in, as you mentioned, not done here. He's going to have to use a SimCity to his advantage for now. Lands that Viking as well. He starts the BC, which I find questionable, but it started a Banshee here. But the BC, if it does come out, will shut this down. The real question is, how much damage is Bunny going to take before that unit gets out? Yeah, that BC's a long way away, his main art. About 40 seconds. The Liberator here. Is it going to get Whoa. by? It does. Nice aim by Sue. Yeah, he does pile it down. And Bunny getting a bit of splash damage there on that ramp. He has created that wall in. He gets a pretty good few shots on the Lings and the Ravagers, but Sue still was so much in the front door of the Terran. Those Lings want to come on in now that the floodgates are open. The Ravagers getting pulled to the front. In come the boys, trying to drill through the Zerg army. Oh, Bunny losing no. a lot here. Oh, God. Oh, man. Those SCVs sacrificing themselves. I think he's... Is he going to hold on? He's got to get those Hellions. There's only three Hellions left. One pops out in the, in the meat grinder there. Goes down immediately. 13 SCVs fall, and... I, I mean, this BC's got a lot of work to do right now. Bunny knows that BC needs to go and punch Sue in the face. It needs to do big damage to make up for this. Yeah, I mean, he definitely needs to get a lot done with his BC. Sue with four queens at home, though, and that Sporkroller also putting a lot of DPS in. He is going to pick off one queen here, but the BC isn't going to be able to do that critical damage that he really wanted. The sisters doing it for themselves, transfusing each other and pushing back the BC of Bunny. That counterattack left a little wanting for the Terran. Yeah, that BC, I mean, this is this is part of the advantage of reacting the way Bunny did, is your battle cruise is going to get across the map pretty quickly, right? You've got the hard-hitting counter-attack. But he just took too much damage. No bunker on the high ground. Of course, he didn't really have any bio units, but even just two Marines in a bunker on the high ground. Oh, natural wide open as well. Not that many Hellions. Lots oh, of links from no. Sue, and he's back again. Time for phase two of the plan here. The champ getting on top of those SCVs. I mean, the Hellions of the Landed Viking will block these Lings off and mitigate the damage. But once again, Sue just finding a relatively cheap, inexpensive way of doing damage to the Terran that Bunny can really not afford. Yeah, I think Bunny might have thought this was more of a fake out from Sue initially. Definitely overestimated his ability to hold on there. And uh, now he's trying to go into that same BC kind of mech flavor but uh, is not, not really there yet. And 40 SCVs to 73 drones. That creep spread now getting started in a big way. Sue's fourth base coming as well. Now, no, he's looking for round two. No Spire just yet for Sue. So there is an opportunity here for these BCs together with Yamato to actually take a favorable engagement against the Queens. They do have a lot of energy. They can only really one-shot the Queens there with the Yamatos. Standing and fighting the Queens, not a good idea. He does get muscled back for now. Mm. And there's Sue. He's like, okay, just in my time for the Spire. I'm going to spend another 450 minerals here. Get a bunch of Queens out. Yeah, those Queens, that's the transfusers, right? Those orange hit point Queens, they look tempting. They're really not that uh, accessible right now. Those Hellions on the north going to try to swing into the mineral line. He knows he's got to do some damage to start evening this game out. But oh. the drone so quick on the evac. Yeah, they're definitely on the evac. They lined up a little bit there. The Hellions getting some roach shots to the face. The Queen's coming in as well. The drone's splitting themselves here. So they take less damage from the Hellions. Seven go down so far. Not bad at all for Bunny to get seven drones, but this is expensive for Bunny. Normally at this point in the game, if he hadn't taken critical damage, it would have been completely fine to throw away Hellions for a bunch of drone kills. But right now, you know, Bunny is still playing catch up. Even though he had three CCs making workers and dropping mules, he's still down almost 20 workers. In fact, exactly 20 workers right now. Now, Terran fans, I don't want to ruin your hopes and dreams. You might be thinking, oh, well, he's doing Thank some you, damage here. But uh, I am going to ruin them anyway. There's 12 corrupt oh. BCs are going down, and there's no anti-air at home. Even with the turrets going up, those corruptors are probably going to be able to find the last BCs and focus them down. And they're definitely going to have the opportunity of doing some great caustic spray harass in the next minute or two. This is such a hard situation because as Bunny scrambling just to keep your BCs alive, just to defend the corruptor harass, you're about to deal with Roach Ravager behind it. And knowing Sue, he senses there's an opening here. A very good chance that he starts to dive in with the Ravagers. He saw those tanks were clumped up. He knows where they are. I'm pretty sure Sue is just going to jump forward, buy all the front tanks, and try to take out this third base. The BC is the only real thing that shoots up here apart from the turret. So they're going to start caustic spraying down the production. The Ravagers on that front doorstep. Only one tank holding that line. The Corruptors getting right on those BCs as well. Bunny GGs and the champ with a flawless run, 
into the group stage. What a great bracket run for Sue.